So in this video, we're going to look at velocity and acceleration uh, for motion along a curve. Okay, so the velocity and acceleration vectors are going to be our focus. Um, all right, let's just remind ourselves of velocity given um, as a function of time. The velocity vector as a function of time is the position, the first derivative of the position vector with respect to time. And the acceleration with respect to time as a function of time, the acceleration vector is the second derivative of the position vector as a function of time. The speed um, of the particle is the absolute value of the velocity vector. Remember, the velocity vector, it's a vector because it has two quantities. It has a magnitude, which is its speed, and it has a direction. Okay, To extract the speed, we need to take the absolute value of the vector. Okay, That gives us the magnitude. Okay. Um, and with the speed, we're just interested in that scalar quantity. No direction, just the magnitude of how much. Okay, And we find that through the absolute value of the velocity vector. That's the absolute value of the first derivative of the position vector. Okay, so two particles have position vectors R1 of t is 2t in the i direction, plus 30 minus t in the j direction. And the second position vector for the second particle is 2t in the i direction, plus 60 minus 4t in the j direction. <clears throat> now, step one, let's find when and where the particles collide. Well, when and where, well, where means setting the two position vectors equal to each other, and then we can solve for t, which will tell us when they collide. Okay, so the where is setting the two position vectors equal to each other, and then the when is equating the coefficients to solve for t. So if we set r1 equal to r2, we get 2t in the i direction for the first um, particle is equal to 2t in the i direction for the second particle. Okay, so 2t equals 2t, which is true for all values of t. Okay, so we need to keep looking because we have to do this for all of the components, not just one of them. So we look in the j direction now. We take the component there of the first particle is 30 minus t, and that must be equal to the um, j component of the second particle, which is 60 minus 4t. So we equate those two, 30 minus t equals 60 minus 4t. Solving for that, okay, um, adding t to both sides, we're going to get uh, 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 3t equals 30. Subtracting 30 from both sides, we're going to get 3t equals 30. And that gives us t equals 10. All right, now, uh, t equals 10 is, is when they collide. Now let's find where, so at t equals 10, the first position vector is 20i plus 20j, simply substituting t equals 10 in here gives us 20 uh, and 20. All right, same here, substituting the second position vector to check, you get 20 plus 60 minus 40 is 20. So they um, collide at 20 units in the i direction plus 20 units in the j direction, so 20 in the x direction, 20 in the y direction on the Cartesian system. All right, so the coordinates, x, y coordinates 20, 20. Let's find the Cartesian path of both. Okay, well, to do that, R1 of t is xi plus yj, and that's equal to 2ti plus 30 minus t in the j direction. Well, we simply set x equal to 2t, x equals to 2t. Solving that gives us t as x on 2. Uh, the y component, y is 30 minus t, and we substitute in for t x on 2 to give us y equals 30 minus x on 2. As for the first particle, for the second particle, exact same process again. x is equal to 2t, solving t as x on 2 as before. y is equal to 60 minus 4, two, uh, four times t, sorry. Put t equals x on 2 in there, and we get 60 minus 2x. Did I say 40 before? I meant 60 minus 4t. Put t as x on 2 in there, so we get um, y equals 60 minus 2x for this um, Cartesian path of the second particle. Now, what we want to show is that the velocities are not perpendicular. If you remember with vectors, um, they are perpendicular to, to each other if the scalar or dot product is equal to zero. So let's look at the two velocity vectors. For particle one, it's 2i minus j. And for particle two, it is uh, 2i minus 4j. Okay, um, and that came from, we, we will have found that with the derivatives, which we have not done here explicitly on the page, but if you uh, differentiate them, 
you differentiate the position vector for R1, you'll get 2 in the I direction, you'll get minus J in the Y direction, which is why we have that one. And then for the second part, if you differentiate that, you'll get 2 in the I direction. Uh, and if you differentiate this part, you'll get minus 4 in the J direction. Okay, now so we have our two vectors, 2i minus j and 2i minus 4j. Dot product of those is 2 times 2 um, plus minus 1 times minus 4. When we do that, we get 2 twos are 4. Minus 1 times minus 4 is plus 4, which gives us 8, which is not 0. So they're not perpendicular. The magnitude of the acceleration um, is always the magnitude of the acceleration the same. Acceleration is a vector. It has magnitude and it has direction, which is why it's a vector quantity. If we just want to extract the magnitude of the acceleration, like we did extract the speed from the velocity vector, then we simply need to take the absolute value of the acceleration vector or the absolute value of the second derivative of the position vector, All right, just as before.